Welcome to Neo Royal House of Pressy Cardboard. Today, on this beautiful Friday, I present to you a 4 player match with Kelly, Mathieu, and Raf. Before we get to the gameplay, I want to take 10 seconds to tell you that we now have a Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, give it a look, you can get the usual perks like early videos, Patreon shoutout, and even help building your next deck. Now back to the content. I will be playing my newest deck, Zerda Downringer. I've played a little less than 10 games with it and still waiting on some powerful cards like my Perforos from the Terror Secret Lair, Wizard. <clears throat> Anyhow, the idea behind this deck is to use Zirda's Reduction to create a lot of tokens and then either swing with them or burn my opponents. I also included a package of excellent flip lands for some diversity and additional rep. Except you, Vance Blasting Cannon. I'm sticking with the outpost. Kelly will be playing Krufix, God of Horizon. The deck wants to ramp a lot, store excess mana into the commander, and then use this mana to cast some big Eldrazi and annihilate our opponents with pure Simic value. Mathieu will be playing his recently made Saskia the Unyielding list. The idea is to cheat into play powerful creatures with a variety of effects and deal some serious damage. The best way to describe it would be Kalia of the Vast with green. Finally, Raf has brought his Izoni Thousand Eyed. This is pretty classic Golgari Graveyard deck, he aims to self-mill himself, sacrifice his creatures for value and end the game with either with triggers or some big swing by buffing Aizoni's bugs. Note that the creature count in this deck is at 42, so everything that triggers off of creature in the graveyard has very high odds. Also look at his playmat, if you play Darkest Dungeon, this is pure gold right here. His opening hand contains Stitcher's Supplier, Priest of Forgotten Gods, Zolaport Cutthroat, Soul of the Harvest, Reliquary Tower, Temple of Malady, and a Basic Swamp. This hand is great for the early game, having 3 lands, a scry, maybe a draw with the priest, if he can find some ramp, he's up to the race. Matthew's opening hand contains Rishkar's Expertise, Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, Arcan Singet, Command Tower, Isolated Chapel, and a Rootbound Crag. Mathieu had to move again down to 6, keeping a solid hand with 3 lands, 2 ramps, and a draw spell. What can you want more? Maybe a land with a typing so the check land comes in untapped, but other than that, very solid. Kitty's opening hand contains Emrakul the Promised End, Tessa God of the Sea, Crescent Grip, Rogue's Passage, 2 basic forests, and a basic island. No ramp in the starting hand for Crufix is somewhat odd, but having a scry every turn with Tassa will boost the chance to find one in the following turns. She has 4 lands and a piece of interaction, it's an okay hand. My opening hand contains Steel Hell Kite, Treasure Map, Arcan Encyclopedia, Soul Ring, Rogue's Passage, and a Mountain. I went down to 6 as well, but having a Soul Ring, I have 4 mana available in my hand. Treasure Map Scries and the Encyclopedia can draw a card every turn. All I need is to find a second colored land to cast my commander, and this will be great. Raf gets to start this off and land drops a basic swan. He casts Stitcher's Supplier. Entering the battlefield, he mills tree. Vraska Golgari Queen, Growing Rights Vitlamok, Death Right Shaman. Kelly land drops an island, and I land drop a mountain. I cast Soul Ring, and then cast Treasure Map. The table goes whoa. Matthew land drops a tap Rubon Crag. Raf land drops Temple of Malady, scrying one. He goes to combat and send the Stitcher Supplier to me for a big point of damage. Kitty land drops a basic forest. She casts her own soul ring and then casts Tessa, God of the Sea. At my upkeep, I activate my treasure map to scry one. I land drop Rogue's Passage. I then cast Arcan Encyclopedia, setuping the engine. Mathieu land drops a Spire Garden and casts Arcan Singet. Raf casts Fauna Shaman. He head into combat and send the supplier to Mathieu to spread the love. After that, he land drops a Terramorphic Expanse and cracks it for a basic forest. At Kelly's upkeep, Tessa scries one. She land drops a basic forest and casts Tetiova, Ventic Druid. I scry one at my upkeep with my treasure map. I then activate the Encyclopedia to draw a card. I land drop a Thespian Stage. It's not colored, but it's a land drop. Mathieu land drops a common tower providing me with a nice Thespian stage target. He casts Beast Whisperer. Raflin drops a Reliquary Tower. He then activates the Fauna Shaman, discarding a Zolaport Cutthroat to fetch Skull Prophet to his hand, which he then casts. Going to combat, Stitcher Supplier comes back to me. At Kitty's upkeep, she scries one. She then land drops a Rogue's Passage. 
The Tiova triggers, gaining her a life and drawing a card. She cast her commander, Crufix, God of Horizon. Knowledge is cruel. It will break your heart and test your allegiance. Are you certain you want this curse? I activate my treasure map at my upkeep to scry one. Having three counters on it, it transforms into Treasure Cove and creates three treasure tokens. I cast my commander, Zerda, the Down Waker. I then activate my Thespian stage to transform it into a command tower. I crack a treasure to activate the encyclopedia and manage to draw a land. I land drop a basic mountain. Matthew land drop isolated chapels. He casts Shaman of the Forgotten Ways. Beast Whisperer triggers, drawing a card. Raph land drops a forest. He casts Soul of the Harvest. At his end step, Kelly puts one mana into her commander. She then cry off of Tassa. She then drops Eye of Ujin. The Tiova trigger for additional value. She then casts Parcel Beast. After that, she casts Kultsvate for an island tap and another basic to hand. The Tiova triggers on the island. I untap and activate Encyclopedia to draw an additional card. I cast Soul Bright Flankin. I activate the Flankin 3 times and generate 8 red mana. Pretty good, right? I then cast Chaos 1. And I activate the one targeting Kelly, hoping for some nice rep. I cast the reveal Mystic Confluence. I bounce Fauna Shaman, Tetsiova, and draw a card. I then drop a Plains. Finally, I then cast Golden Guardian, and Araf gets really hyped. At my end step, Mathieu casts Worldly Tutor, fetching Gorkla, Terror of Gull Sisma. Mathieu draws and casts Gorkla. He then casts Sylvan Library. Raph recasts Fauna Shaman. Sword of the Harvest triggers for a card. He then casts Priest of Forgotten Gods. Sword of the Harvest triggers once more. After that, he then drops Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth. Raph wants to keep his soul to protect himself from Mathieu, but Mathieu offers him that they both attack Kelly this turn. He agrees. He goes to combat and sends the soul of the Harvest to Kelly. At his end step, using our newly found Swamp Typing, the Eye of Ujin adds one mana to Crufix. Kelly then drops a forest. She casts Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. She gets a cast trigger, exiling Fauna Shaman and Sylvan Library. She passes. I activate my Flamekin to generate 8 red mana. I then activate Chaos 1, targeting Kelly again. She reveals and I cast Rishkar Expertise. I draw 4 cards and cast Blaring Recruiter for free. I then drop a Drifting Meadow Tap. I then cast Dereli, Scrap 7. I plus 2 my Planeswalker, discarding Kemba Car Region and Mentor of the Meek to draw 2 cards. I cast Sun Titan, entering the battlefield, I bring back Mentor of the Meek on board. I propose to Mathieu to honor his deal with Raph by preventing Ulamog from blocking, and during Mathieu's turn, I activate my commander to do so. Mathieu goes to combat and send Gorkla to Kelly. He then drops a godless shrine untapped. Mathieu casts his own Rishkar expertise. He draws 5 cards and casts Terror of the Peaks for free. At his end step, Raph taps his Skull Prophet to mill 2, Necrotic Wound, and something I can't see. Raph then drops a Swamp. He activates Priest of Forgotten Gods, sacrificing Skull Prophet and Stitcher Supplier. He draws a card, gains 2 black mana, and loses 2 life. We also have to sacrifice a creature. Kelly reacts by activating the Parcel Beast, drawing our top card. She then sacrifices the Parcel Beast, I choose my Mentor of the Meek, and Mathieu chooses Beast Whisperer. The Supplier Death Trigger goes on the stack and he mills 3. Raph casts his commander. I zone Thousand Eyed. Entering the battlefield, he creates 7 1 1 insect tokens. Kelly cries at her upkeep. She casts Lightning Grieve, and the table gets slightly more concerned. She equips them to the mug. After that, she recasts the Tiova. She wants to keep blockers and does not attack. At the end step, I sacrifice my last treasure for a mana, and then activate the Golden Guardian to fight my Sun Titan. Losing a fight it was never meant to win, it transforms into Gold Forge Garrison. I then tap my new Garrison to activate my Encyclopedia to draw a card. We then go to my turn. I activate my Flame King for 8 red mana. I cast Divine Visitation. 
I decide to risk it all and cast Anointed Procession. I then activate my Chaos One, targeting Kelly once more. She reveals and I cast Traverse the Outlands. Reacting to the Traverse, Kelly cross and grips Divine Visitation. The split second prevents me from creating angels and I'm sad. I then fetch 5 planes and a mountain to my battlefield. I plus 2 Daredi, discarding Myriad Landscape and Cryptic Caves to draw 2. I then drop a Temple of Triumph, scrying 1. Not yet finished, I cast Burrow Sing It. Heading into combat, I send my Sun Titan to Mathieu, and attacking, my Titan will bring back the Mentor of the Meek. Mathieu then drops a mountain. He casts his commander, Saskia, the Unyielding. You heard the chief, she wants them dead! Entering the battlefield, Terror of the Peak deals 3 damage to the Priest of Forgotten Gods. He then picks Raph for Saskia's trigger. After that, he casts Dragon Lord Dromoka. Entering the battlefield, Terror of the Peak deals 5 damage to Blaring Recruiter. I react to the target by paying 3 white to create 6 1 1 tokens. I then pay my floating mana to draw a card off of Mentor of the Meek. Mature goes to combat and sends Terror of the Peaks into the ready. At the end step, to quote him, Raph cracks an insect to draw a card and gain a life. Raph then drops a swamp. He then casts Eternal Witness. Entering the battlefield, he returns Necrotic Wound to his hand. He casts the ever scary Burning Pod, paying 2 life. He activates the pod, sacrificing Eternal Witness and 2 more life. He fetches Creekwood Leech to his battlefield. Kelly cries and draws. She then casts Zendikar Resurgent. Nothing like making friends by doubling your mana. I go to my turn and start by drawing with the Arcane Encyclopedia. I plus two the ready, discarding Mask of Memory and another artifact I can't see, drawing two cards. I activate my Flamekin, granting Trample to my Commander, Sun Titan and the Flamekin itself. I then gain 8 red mana. I cast Qatar's Crusade. I then cast Oketra, the True. Entering the battlefield, the Crusade triggers and I put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on all my creatures. I then activate Oketra 4 times, creating 8 tokens. I stack my triggers so that all my 8 tokens are on the battlefield when the Crusade's trigger resolves. My whole board gains 8 plus 1 plus 1 counters. I then head into combat. I send my 3 trampling creatures to Mathieu and 6 10 10 tokens to Kelly, taking her out of the game. With the Sun Titan trigger, I bring back Mask of Memory. Mathieu then drops Caves of Coleos. He then casts Thunderfoot Baloth. Entering the battlefield, Terror deals 7 damage directly to me. He casts Austere Command naming CMC 3 or less and enchantments. Raph has no reaction and I respond with Burrow's Charm, giving indestructible to my permanence. Raph untaps and puts away his commander for a 7 drop. He fetches and puts Avenger of Zendikar on his board. Entering the battlefield, he creates 7 plant tokens. He then casts CDC, Undead Vizier. Reacting to the cast, I activate Chaos 1 on Raph. He reveals and I do not cast Living Death. He then exploits a plant and fetches his library. He settles on an animate dead and brings back his commander to create some more tokens. At the end step, I activate Oketra to create a token, triggering Qatar's Crusade once more. Having survived the full turn, I go to combat and swing out both Mathieu and Raph. At instant speed, I can activate the Flamekin to give Trample to my blocked creature so that the damage go through, and so I end the game. Looking back at this game, this was one of the best game I got with Zerda yet. Except the clunky start, everything fell into place at the right time with card advantage, mana and bombs. I'm sure Porphyros will be a monster in this deck, and I'm really excited to try it when it will arrive. I'm also waiting for Ilion, Eroas and Geraj's Barrel Cry. Much to come. Kelly did not start quickly enough to race us in mana and did not have enough answers for the threat level she was generating. It can happen sometimes, but you can't underestimate a commander like Crufix that can bounce everything and run away with the win. Mathieu had a really fair game of Saskia, and that gave us some more time to grow our board. When the early turns are composed of Bloom Tender and Selvala, the game can take a sharp turn quickly. Finally, 
Raf didn't have a bad game, but got slowed down by us missing with the Fauna Shaman. I'm pretty sure he would have been able to close next turn with the fetch from CDC and Burning Pod. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't join us yet and leave a comment. I answer to all the questions. Have a good day and take care. This is a placeholder for commander intros. Uh.